This is Mars Morgan, an artwork by Nikolai Astrup from 1920. It depicts a landscape from the western part of Norway, a tree with a human silhouette in the foreground. Trees like this one are not an uncommon sight on a western Norwegian farm, and it's not by chance. The trees have actually been shaped by humans. For centuries, farmers have modified these trees using a technique called pollarding, and the result has been visible in our cultural landscapes for as long as we can remember. These humanoid creations are especially characteristic of Western Norway, but can also be found in other parts of the country, actually around the whole world. But what is pollarding exactly? And why do people do it? On the Western Norwegian farms, challenging topography and growth conditions made it difficult to obtain enough animal feed from the ground layer. Pollarding provided additional fodder from the tree layer and could be done in areas unsuitable for grazing and grass harvest. This maximized production as the leaves served as additional fodder for animals, and the branches were made into tools, poles, and firewood. These trees were cultivated and preserved for generations, some farms having hundreds of such trees, which could form large harvesting forests. The pollarding technique relies on these trees' incredible ability to regenerate. When the trunk is left standing, new branches grow and can be harvested again five to seven years later. After many years of pollarding, the scarred branches form large clusters and the trees take on human-like shapes, much like in Astrup's painting. But there's more to these trees than national romanticism. When a tree is pollarded, it acquires properties that are beneficial for both flora and fauna. A pollarded tree has a relatively small crown on a low and thick trunk and is therefore more robust to weather and wind, often letting it become very old. In addition, pollarded trees often become hollow in the middle at a younger age than unmanaged trees, and ancient hollow trees are particularly rare and valuable habitats for a variety of organisms and plants. For instance, many species of beetles depend on the dying wood inside to complete their life cycle. The trunk, with its old and rough bark, can host a variety of red-listed lichens and mosses. Birds use hollow trees as nesting places, and the same goes for pollinating insects, such as hoverflies and bees. But with the rise of machine harvest, concentrated feed and fertilizer in modern agriculture, pollarding is no longer necessary or profitable. So what happens when people stop pollarding? Unmaintained pollarded trees on cultivated land are often removed as they can obstruct efficient machine harvest. Those that remain tend to grow oversized crowns and become more vulnerable to wind and weather. As a consequence, these treasured habitats have become increasingly scarce in our landscape. To combat this loss in biodiversity and cultural heritage, Norwegian farmers today receive financial support for maintaining pollarded trees. In the research project Rotate, we asked farmers what motivates them to carry on the tradition of pollarding. Most answered that they do it to maintain the cultural landscape and to preserve the aesthetic, traditional and historic values of these trees. Many also answered that they want to conserve the biodiversity associated with the trees. Some still do it to get fodder, but not out of necessity, but rather because the animals appreciate it and benefit from a varied diet. The aim of the project, Rotate, is to support the biodiversity of organisms associated with traditional forms of forest management, many of which are now abandoned or rapidly declining. Through interdisciplinary collaboration in research and practical implementation, the project seeks to revive traditional forest practices to conserve and strengthen this biodiversity. Find this interesting? Explore our other videos.